you may be familiar with terrestrial isopods like <laughs> you may be familiar with terrestrial isopods like Porcelliolavis dairy cow but did you know that there are isopods that are in your fish tank let's take a look so I'm calling this an intro to aquatic isopods, specifically freshwater aquatic isopods, because there are a lot of marine ones, and apparently those ones are parasitic, but it's fine because we don't mess with the salty water, so don't have to worry about that. So what are they? I know what you're thinking. Freshwater isopods? Isopods that, that, that can swim? Yes, but before you throw your dairy cows in the aquarium, these are isopods that have adapted to live their whole lives in water. They're extremely low maintenance and have a high tolerance to polluted water and water with low oxygen levels. I read one paper that said they sometimes found them in places that even scuds couldn't really thrive in. Aquatic isopods are a benthic species. Benthic meaning they live on the bottom of the, the, the floor. They're detritivores, which means they are scavengers. They help break down leaves, wood. They're considered a keystone species in nature. That distinction represents their importance not only to the food web, but to the environmental health of the waterways they occupy. Not only are they an important natural food source for fish, but they're an important part of breaking down things into usable nutrients and preventing the buildup of waste and rotting materials. Because complex fibers are pretty hard to break down and not everything's really down for the task, but these little guys are. If they don't sense any danger in the tank, you're gonna see them scurrying around in the open, eating off plants, rocks, anything where biofilm can grow, brown diatome algae, anything that's tasty to them. And while they can't swim, that doesn't stop them from exploring the tank. They enjoy climbing up plants and rocks and jumping off and gliding through the water. Besides helping break down things, they're also, as I mentioned before, an important part of the food web. And there are some species of fish that they've even found do worse and have less uh, productivity when there are aquatic isopods absent. Their life cycle begins with the males engaging in a guarding slash carrying behavior where they hold the female in place until fertilization is possible, which is right after molting when the female's overductile openings are free. They engage in biphasic molting, which means they molt in one half at a time. So if you're ever looking at your isopod and you see part of it looks a little whitish and grayish and the other part looks normal, it could be that it's in the process of molting and it's just running around half molted, which does happen. With a time interval of about 24 hours, insemination happens internally in the marsupium where the eggs are fertilized and the gravid female carries the eggs around until they hatch. It's pretty obvious when you see one, it's just a big white mass underneath uh, the female of eggs. You'll know, trust me, you'll know it when you see it. Uh, there'll be no doubt. Uh, once they are ready to hatch, the isopods come out as very tiny versions of the adults crawling around, about one millimeter, and you probably won't even notice them until they get big enough to really see. And then suddenly you're like, wait, why do I see isopods? I think anyone that has an interest in creating tanks that take inspiration from nature or people who are just a fan of biodiversity in their aquarium should definitely give these guys a try. And they go with the smallest of tank inhabitants, including shrimp. So, I mean, what's not to like? Always looking for something you can safely keep with shrimp and these guys certainly make the list. Unlike scuds, which have a mixed reputation on whether they eat plants, whether they eat fish eggs and fry or baby shrimp, these guys will not touch any of those things. In a little bit of summary, these guys are just kind of fun, goofy little detritivores. They act pretty similar to the land shrimp that we all love, the terrestrial isopods, and they are beneficial to the tank as part of the cleanup crew that fits a slightly different niche than maybe we're used to. What about the care for these guys? Well, they're pretty unfussy in my experience. They're adaptable to a wide range of temperatures, and pHs and parameters. And although I don't have a strict guideline, I think that Neocaridina parameters are a good baseline for keeping these guys just because I keep them with Neocaridina shrimp and they both seem to do great in uh, the tanks. Now my water's pretty soft, low, low TDS, uh, slightly acidic. And as you can see, I've had no problem having tons and tons of these guys hop around. So as far as that goes, unfussy. I keep them room temperature. I think that they're probably safe, similar again to Neocaridina. I would probably keep them in the 60 to 78 range. I think 76, 74 is a good 
a, a good spot if you want them to keep reproducing and growing fast, but I think they'll still rock out on the lower 70s as well. They'll eat all the same fish foods, bottom feeder pellets, they're not picky, and they're pretty much chow down on whatever you toss in. As far as tank mates go, yeah, I think that you know, other inverts, small fish, um, I, th I think they can persist among the presence of fish just fine if they got a bunch of rocks, hardscape to crawl under. But I definitely recommend if you're experimenting with them, since not everyone has kept them with different combinations, you know, just get a small tank or a small container and culture them in there first. And then uh, as your culture grows, which should be relatively fast, you can start experimenting with them with different tank mates. But for me, you know, the same shrimp rule, they got a small mouth, too small to, to eat fully grown ones, and there's places where the young ones can hide and grow up. I think you're good to go, you're golden. I've been keeping them with rice fish, and some uh, chili rasboras, uh, CPDs, uh, all the nano fish, or even just fish that stay at the top, uh, clown killifish, I think you could probably get away with in the right setup. Now, I haven't quite found any research to totally back this up, but I think they have a good potential as a live food culture as they're probably, I'd have to assume, a similar nutrition composition to other things similar to them, like scuds. And I've been doing a little bit of testing, and things definitely love eating them. If you look at them long enough, you'll start seeing the difference between the males and females. There's probably a scientific way to do this more accurately, but for me, it's a size difference. And then the males, you'll see they get these bigger claws, um, and their body shapes are a little bit different. So I'll put some clips up here. You can see the male versus female. Uh, you look at it long enough, you'll kind of get the idea. Uh, breeding really doesn't take much for effort at all, in my experience at least. If you have both uh, the sexes in there, they should pretty much take care of that. They reach sexual maturity in about five-ish weeks, depending on the temperature, and they have a lot of babies at once. So the growth is pretty exponential. Uh, the females will carry underneath them the eggs you'll see in the marsupium, and I think it takes around two weeks from the hatch, and they come out as tiny little miniature versions of the adults. So. Breeding, pretty unfussy, pretty uh, simple. Just give them a spot where they can kind of crawl around, do their thing, have enough to eat, not get predated upon, and you should be good. The reason I really love these guys is, you know, I was getting into the terrestrial isopod thing, I got my dairy cows, and I was thinking like, yo, there's gotta be like an isopod for the water, right? Like, come on. And I did my research, I was looking it up, and turns out, yes, there are isopods that live in the water. So I was pretty happy and surprised to see that they're in the waterways all around us. The aquatic isopods are just pretty much everywhere. And I didn't even know these creatures existed, much less near me. So I think when we're chasing these more natural tanks, more complete ecosystems, it's cool to have something that I know, you know, in the area around me is an integral part of how the ecosystem stays healthy and functional. Where can you get these guys? So there's only a few places you can find these guys online. You could try a research uh, place like Carolina Biological, although they're not totally clear on what species it is. I think they're uh, collected from nature, but there are some people growing and selling them out of their tanks. There's hobbyists like myself. Uh, I've been breeding them growing what I call the isopod agenda, you know, trying to make them more readily available and accessible to the hobby as a whole. But you know, if you search around there, there's plenty of options now. I think it's a growing thing. And if you're watching this video, I assume you're interested in becoming part of this isopod agenda. So please go out there, buy some isopods from uh, any of the great hobbyists or businesses selling them and tell me how they do for you. Tell me what you've learned. There's a lot of things about them I'd like to know, like why do their antenna move around like crazy sometimes? You know, I, I swear I saw one act like a scorpion and try and scare off a fish once. Uh, there, there's just a lot of interesting behaviors I think would be worthwhile having more people talk about. But that being said, there's tons of research on them out there. Uh, and papers to read. I'll link some of my favorites below if you want to learn more, do a bit of a deep dive. This is just an intro video in the future. Once I've had them for longer, I've had them for about a year now, I'll do another deep dive and we can try and uh, get into the details. So let me know what more you'd like to learn about them. Uh, if you get some, let me know uh, how they do and what you've learned. 
and let's spread this isopod agenda, man. Let's let's get these guys out there because you know, I think everyone needs more isopods in their life. Thank you.